Hey class, welcome back. Uh, so this is a uh, part two of our signal processing lecture. Uh, so uh, this one's going to be over dynamic processing. So this is going to be, you know, uh, effects that control the difference between the soft parts and the loud parts. So that's going to be some examples of that include compression, limiting, gating, expanding, and ducking. Um, so let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, some of that in action. Compression the dynamic range reduction signal processor. Um, so ultimately what that is doing, um, as you can see here, we've got a, a, a signal that's got a lot of dynamic range. We've got some soft parts, we've got some loud parts. A compressor, however, is going to reduce that dynamic range. It's gonna make the, uh, the soft parts louder, maybe make the, the louder parts quieter, reduce them in such a way that they have a lower dynamic range uh, as an example here. So compression is just the process uh, used to reduce the range of the softest and loudest signals uh, of an audio signal. So it's pretty neat. A lot of fun stuff we can do with that. Compression slash limiting. So just some examples of why you might need some compression on your track. Uh, limiting is just a, a more extreme version of compression. It usually means it has a higher ratio. We'll go over that in a little bit. But uh, compression versus limiting, or, or compression and limiting, uh, what they're going to do is uh, allow, let's just uh, take an example here of uh, compression with your TV. Because everyone has a compressor built into their TV, which is pretty neat. You can actually turn it on and off. Um, but uh, what happens is, well, let's just take, for example, uh, uh, with the compressor off, uh, our dialogue might be too soft, uh, explosion may wake up the kids, uh, there may be a blaring commercial, there may be some dialogue that's just right, you know, and this is all with, without you controlling the volume, you know, you just have a fixed volume, let's say you're falling asleep or something, and we've got this fixed volume and it's just, you know, all sorts of bad stuff with it. So we can throw that compressor on there and what it's going to do is, with that one fixed volume, you know, you falling asleep, it may be, you know, the, the dialogue is just right for you because you got that nice compressor on there. So it's just gonna, it's gonna increase the, the quieter parts, make those just right for you. So that means when an explosion happens, it's gonna reduce the level so the kids can keep sleeping. Uh, the commercial level is gonna be reduced to match the volume of the normal level. Um, and uh, again, if the level was already just right, it leaves it alone. So that's pretty cool. That's, I, I, I think a compressor is uh, incredibly handy for those reasons. So a compressor or a limiter is gonna have these main uh, parameter choices. Those include uh, threshold or input, uh, gain reduction, output or makeup gain, uh, attack, release, ratio, link, side chain, and bypass. So let's go over each of those individually here. Uh, threshold, uh, sometimes known as input, controls the decibel level at which the compressor is gonna kick in to start reducing the dynamic range. So it's, you know, if, if we've got our output level, we've got our input level, uh, if we start to bring that threshold down on our input level, it's going to change the output level effectively. So whenever it changes that output, we're gonna start getting what we call gain reduction. That's where effectively you're gonna start uh, to see, you know, the signal where it would normally go above a particular point is now actually being decreased in volume, which is pretty neat. Um, so what we do is we want to watch our gain reduction meter. This is going to tell us just how much gain reduction uh, we've introduced uh, based on that threshold. So it's uh, usually like in Pro Tools, they actually have a little dialog box here. Whenever you uh, input a compressor, this little meter will pop up and it actually shows you just how much gain reduction. It's gonna come from the top, it's gonna to make its way down. So if it was super compressed, you know, it would be compressing all the way down to the bottom, just light compression, you know, some, some just a little bit, you know, some action in here. Um, sometimes you'll see your gain reduction meter as a VU meter. Um, what'll happen is it'll start at zero and it'll make its way back. So, you know, light compression would be something negative three to negative five, heavy compression, negative seven to negative 10, you know, so just, Keep an eye on your gain reduction, make sure you're not compressing it too much. Once you have uh, started uh, uh, compressing the signal uh, and you're watching your makeup uh, or your, your gain reduction, you can see just how much gain reduction you've done, you know, whether it's that negative three, negative five. And then typically you wanna make up that gain. Um, so that what that does is it makes it to where we're lowering the volume of the louder parts by X amount. Well, that means we can increase the volume of the quieter parts by X amount. So makeup gain is where that comes into play. Uh, it effectively makes up the reduction made by the compressor. 
So we can see here our original signal, very dynamic, had some loud parts, had some soft parts. Uh, they were able to compress the, the loud parts, made them closer in volume to the soft parts, and then the whole thing gets to be increased in volume. Pretty cool. So attack uh, and release. These two uh, are probably the more complex to actually hear uh, them in action, um, but I've got some pretty good ways of kind of explaining it, uh, and you just kind of got to play around with it to actually train your ear to start listening to these changes. So attack is going to tell the compressor how fast to kick in uh, when the signal reaches that threshold. So as soon as it reaches that threshold, it's not going to immediately just lower in volume. It's not instantaneous. So it takes a particular amount of time. So that's our, that attack. So a fast attack that's somewhere you know between 0 0.01 and 10 milliseconds, super fast. Um, that's going to kill your transient and deaden the sound because it, you know, we, we can imagine something with the transient. If if I have a really fast attack, it's going to squash that transient, you know, which is you know that action that happens at the beginning of our envelope. Um, with a slower attack, um, what that does is it allows that transient to pass um, for a much more punchy, livelier sound. But sometimes, if you allow your transient to pass, and he's the only thing that was loud in volume. You've, you've effectively, you're, you're making your compressor not as effective. So there's always a nice blend between, you know, I've, I'm either killing my sound, I'm allowing my sound to stay, you know, nice and full, but is it compressed enough? You know, there's a balance that, that's done, and you can usually find that balance a little easier with that attack and your, your threshold. So the opposite of that, uh, release. Uh, so the release is just how long does it take for the compressor to disengage? So once the audio drops back below that threshold, uh, the release is how long it takes for it to return back to that normal level. Um, so, a uh, you know, so you can imagine, uh, you know, we can watch our timeline here. If a uh, you know the attack time is how quickly does the uh, uh, compressor engage? So if if this is a let's say we're looking at a square wave here where it's instantaneously going to go above the threshold, which we've got set here. So if it instantaneously instantaneously goes above the threshold it's still based on our attack time how, how quickly it's going to reduce in volume based on our our ratio which we'll get to here in just a second but if you notice it's going to increase the volume of not only the parts above the threshold but even the parts that go back below the threshold um, if you notice here and so that's where this release time is going to come into play so whenever that happens, is our release time going to bring that signal back up to our regular volume? Because um, right now you notice because it was reduced in volume with our, you know, based on that attack time because we went above the threshold. Whenever we come back below that threshold, it's going to take a particular time to get back to the regular volume. That's that release time. So what I like to do just for when I'm listening to, to stuff with a compressor, I like to use faster release times for faster songs and slower release times for slower songs. You know, we don't want our, our like, let's just say a bass part, which, you know, let's say a kind of a slower bass part, where we don't want it to com compress the bass line, and then as soon as that bass line gets back below that threshold, increase in volume, because then you can get this pumping sound. Um, and it, because it just sounds like all of a sudden in the middle of your note, now my compress, now my bass signal is getting louder halfway through the note. You know, so that's where we, a slower release time to allow the note to become, you know, take its full cycle before it gets back to regular volume, which is which is cool too. Cool. So ratio, we talked that about that a little bit, but I just want to kind of get in on what that is actually doing. So ratio is going to determine the amount of output based on the level of input. Um, so what that's saying there is once we've gotten above our threshold, that signal, it's going to reduce in volume based on our ratio. So let's just take an example of a two to one ratio would indicate that every two decibels the input is over the threshold, only one decibel will pass over the threshold to the output. So as an example there, uh, here it was our normal output level, you know, this, this straight line, if it was a one to one, if it was allowing uh, our output to output the same as it was inputted. However, here at a two to one, we notice that our output is now uh, lower than it was at a one to one. Uh, and then, of course, you know, even more at a four to one, even more at an eight to one. So as an example here, uh, if one, uh, let's see, 
So it indicates that for every two decibels the input is over the threshold. So let's say this thing got two decibels above this threshold. It's only going to allow one decibel over. You know, so so that means for this one, for every eight decibels that come over that threshold, only one is allowed to go over. So we can kind of extrapolate there. We've got 10 to 1 ratio. That's what we start to call a limiter. Um, because at that point, this signal would have to be 10 decibels hotter than the threshold to allow even one decibel over. Um, so that means it's pretty just an extreme compression. Um, a brick wall limiter um, means that it effectively it has an infinity to one ratio, meaning that it doesn't matter how loud the signal gets. If it gets to that threshold at all, it's only allowing one decibel over. So, you know, so we want to, you know, it's, or as you can see, it, it actually would have to get infinity over before it allow one over. So as you can see, that, that's not going to allow anything through that threshold. So that's what they call a brick wall limiter. Hard knee versus soft knee. So this is usually just a button. Uh, sometimes it's actually a knob where you can uh, adjust the amount. Uh, but a hard knee, uh, kind of like here, you can see, what it does is it abruptly, abruptly reduces the signal gain as soon as it reaches the threshold slash attack time. Um, so it's good for fast transient percussion stuff because you want it to react as soon as it gets to that threshold, it starts that attack time and then that attack you know, it starts to reduce as soon as it gets to that attack time. Whereas if we were to soften it up a little bit, what happens is it'll actually start to compress a little bit before it actually gets to that threshold. So it's it's a little smoother uh, of a compression. So they call it soft knee. Um, and you can see it's just a smoother. So it's starting to reduce that volume before it actually even gets to the threshold. So it's going to re re gradually reduce the signal gain uh, as soon as it reaches the threshold attack time. Usually it's the auto setting. It's good for more subtle compression, uh, great for vocals, things of that nature. So remember, soft knee, good for vocals, hard knee, more for percussive, transient type sounds. Link. Uh, so Link allows you to join two, uh, a two-channel compressor or two single-channel compressors for stereo use. It effectively means that whatever channel uh, one is doing, channel two will recreate it. Um, so typically one channel will act as a master control for both channels, subsequently overriding the second channel settings. Um, usually it'll be just some sort of a link, you know, where it's dual mono, that's where you have two completely separate uh, compressors, you know, one could be for kick, the other could be for vocal, uh, or we could do something like stereo, uh, where they're linked, where, you know, you want to compress the left side equally to the right side. Um, and of course, there's the bypass button. That's usually just, uh, it's used to compare the signal with and without the processing. So because, you know, this is usually done in series, we can listen to it, uh, you know, without the compression and with the compression with, with just one simple switch. Cool, so there's some different types of compressors out there. Um, not all are created equal. Um, so there's optical. Optical is uh, kind of an early, uh, a compressor it's a light bulb and a photo cell so the photo cell can recognize when the light bulb is lighting up and the light bulb is going to light up based on our signal so that means the more signal the more you know it's going to light up thusly the more the photo cell will receive it and so typically your compression will be done based on how much the photo cell received would be like oh I'm it's brighter okay well now I'm gonna lower the volume which is pretty neat um, but it was usually a very smooth compressor um, with a very slow attack, um, which again made it great for vocals, uh, bass guitars, you know, kind of slow attack compression and stuff. Um, so alternatively, they came out with a FET, Field Effect Transistor. Uh, it's usually not very subtle uh, because it does have a much faster attack, or at least a much faster attack as possible. And so that makes it usually really good for drums or even more kind of aggressive vocals. You know, rock and roll loves FET compressors for that sort of stuff. Uh, then there's the VCA, voltage controlled amplifiers. These are kind of like what we find within our plugins because effectively we're just using, you know, IC chips and things of that nature. So it, what's cool about them though is they can go aggressive to subtle because they have such a variance in, they can have an extremely fast attack, but they can also have a really slow attack. So they can be used to emulate optical compressors or even FET compressors uh, with a VCA compressor, which is pretty neat. Um, because you do have such a variable attack control. So it's very versatile. Uh, 
the next one uh, is very moo. It's a very high gain, low distortion, uh, or sorry, it, it, it uses high gain, low distortion tubes to create a very subtle compression. Um, it has a very soft knee, it's very transparent. Um, so you'll usually find it on, uh, you know, in a radio where you're just gonna send signal through it and you just wanna make sure that the signal on the back end isn't going to, to overload if, if by chance, a, you know, a signal came in with just maybe a little, a little too much gain on it. You know, this thing's just going to glue it all together and, and not allow it a lot uh, to distort or you know, cause anything too crazy. It's usually what they call the glue. It just kind of glues it all together. Cool. And alternative uh, to compressors uh, are what we call noise gates, or sometimes just call them gates. Uh, these allow a user to turn on and off a signal uh, based on its amplitude. So that means it's going to actually increase the dynamic range. It's going to mean my my loud parts can stay loud while my soft parts can either be turned down or even go to off, uh, you know, based on our parameter choices. So a closed gate means that effectively no sound is heard. So when the gate is on, that means you know we're not hearing any signal through there. And a gate remains closed until a certain volume or amplitude uh, threshold is met. So uh, as you see here, this is before gating. So let's just say we've got a signal. Uh, let's just say this is a tom. This is some cymbal action in in that tom mic. Um, so what we can do is we can gate the tom t with a, a threshold. We'd set the threshold above the noise floor or louder than, you know, above the cymbals to where the cymbals don't uh, open the gate. Uh, but the tom would open the gate as soon as it hit, you know, as soon as the tom was hit. So that's, that's where, where we get something like this. So usually you're gonna find gates commonly used for drums uh, for live applications. Um, in fact, even right now I'm using a, a, a gate on my voice, you know, so we don't hear my cat's meow or you know, if someone's watching TV in there. Um, so cool, uh, so that's uh, dynamic uh, processors. Uh, please stay tuned uh, for our next video on time-based processors. Appreciate you, see you soon.